As the COVID-19 rages on across the world, the Chinese city of Wuhan, which was the epicenter of the viral outbreak, is emerging from strict quarantine. With the city no longer under lockdown to curb the spread of the virus, residents are regaining freedom of movement. The first train set off from Wuhan at 6.25 a.m. and it was one of over 270 passenger trains bound for destinations across China today. These include those to Shanghai, Shenzhen and Chengdu. Authorities say disinfection work has been carried out in all stations and trains prior to service resumption. Trains also come with quarantine seats for emergencies. Train attendants, though, are taking no chances. They're wearing masks and goggles to work. Passengers, meanwhile, will need to present a health code via a cell phone app before they're allowed to enter the train station. They're also reminded to keep their face masks on for the entire duration of the train ride. Flights also resumed at Wuhan's international airport. Same safety measures apply to ensure passengers are healthy before they enter the terminal. And notices abound to remind people to comply to safe distancing. Though over 10 weeks of tough restrictions came to an end at the stroke of midnight in a light show watched by thousands. Wuhan and the wider province of Hubei bore the brunt of the outbreak in China, accounting for most of the over 81,000 infections and over 3,300 deaths from the virus. But with rapidly falling cases, restrictions have been gradually eased, with an outbound travel ban now lifted. The Chinese government estimates that as many as 55,000 people will leave Wuhan, a city of 11 million today. The move, though, comes amid warnings by the World Health Organization, which urged governments not to hastily ease restrictions so as to prevent a recurrence of COVID-19 infections. And our China correspondent, Olivia Xiong, speaks to residents in Wuhan to find out how they feel as the city takes cautious steps towards normality. This was not a job the 41-year-old had ever expected he'd have to do. But after Wuhan became, in his words, the eye of the storm, he stepped forward to become a volunteer. His task, helping to man entry points every other day in the community. And checking permits and health codes of those who pass through. Just一直还站着，没有坐着的时候，就为什么总是问自己为啥？就是自己给自己挖个坑，然后自己跳进去。但是转念一想，这样的社区其实是我最需要我们关怀的，因为他们不懂，他们不懂事情的严重性，他们
As for those living outside Wuhan, being apart from family and watching their hometown struggle to contain the outbreak has been difficult. When Singapore-based Wuhan native Guo Huixin saw her city come under lockdown, she jumped at the chance to partner a Singapore NGO to source and donate masks and other supplies to hospitals in her hometown. At that time, you just feel that if they have a chance that you can do anything, I will take this. I will grab this chance to help them, and uh, just a little. If it's just a little, maybe a few thousand pieces is also good enough. She now continues to stay in touch with her family via WeChat, but knows that it will be some time before she can see them in person. I supposed to go back in April, yeah, this month, but now I'm afraid that I have to postpone my flight. Flight and my uh, parents also suggest me to stay here to wait until the situation become better. Yeah, but only the sad thing is is uh, uh, I won't see them for more than a year. So yeah, I think I will miss them very much. <laughs> The next time she returns, whenever that may be, Miss Guo says she doesn't hope for much, but just to spend more time with her parents.